Welcome in my fellow Shield Bros, it's Shield Bro 6 for the History Armada, and we are back again with another episode with another little bit of history for you. Today, on this August 22nd, we are going to talk about the very first Nessie sighting. We're going to talk about St. Columba and the legend that started the great cryptid tale of the Loch Ness Monster. So, on August 22nd, 564, the first sighting of this cryptid that would become known as the Loch Ness Monster was reported by St. Columba. On August 22nd, 564, some historians say Columba, a Christian leader at the time, reported seeing an animal that would become known as the Loch Ness Monster in Loch Ness, Scotland. Columba was an Irish priest that would become a saint later on, who was visiting Scotland and reportedly compelled the monster to not attack a follower. So this delves into a bit of cryptozoology as well as the Catholic religion. As for the Catholic point of view, it comes into the tale of a saint and one of his great deeds. As for the cryptozoology perspective, we're talking about a mythical creature that probably did not exist, at least not in memorable times. So, the earliest written reference linking such a creature to exist in Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands can be found in the biography of St. Columba, the man credited with the introduction of Christianity to Scotland. On this day, August 22nd, in 565 BCE, Columba was said to have been on his way to visit a Pictish king when he stopped along the shore of Loch Ness. Seeing a large beast about to attack a man who was swimming in the lake, Columba raised his hand invoking the name of the Christian god and commanding the monster to go back. The swimmer was saved by Columba and Columba was praised for his effort. Later revered as a saint, Columba's life was written about 100 years after the supposed Nessie event, which leads some historians to doubt the accuracy, but it's still a good basis for the tale. So, that is the earliest recorded record of the aquatic monster, and it was written to be a some type of sea creature that attempted to gulp down that local farmer of sorts until Columba was able to save him. So, it has taken on this kind of Pleasaur pers uh, persona, as you can see here with this picture of a statue that is in Scotland. So since then, rumors have spread like wildfire about the presence of a mythical creature in the depths of the loch. Historians believe the story was married together with descriptions of Kelpies, water horses in prominent Gaelic and Celtic folklore, and the story of Loch Ness Monster began to further reach more afield in the 20th century. In 1934, one photographer, London surgeon R.K. Wilson, ever even managed to take a convincing photograph that seemed to show a creature coming out of the loch that looked like a humped back pleosaur. Since then, about between 5 to, you know, to more than 20 sightings every single year happened, so anywhere between 5 and 20. The tally for 2017 alone was 8 sightings of Nessie. Which may not sound a lot, but you know, it's not bad when you consider it's a folkloric, mythical creature. So, perhaps Nessie Network did exist. However, on this day, like I said, August 22nd, 555 BCE is when the Tory happened. So now that we've kind of talked about who Nessie is and the origins, as well as how many sightings there are a year, let's talk about the origin a little more. So, upon that fateful day, St. Columba was there. St. Columba was an Irish abbot at the time, a missionary and a scholar who helped spread Christianity in Scotland. His actions ultimately made intelligible all the seemingly encourages Catholic elements and motifs in both the, you know, modern media that you see. But, this is only a small part of his resume as he was also a statesman, a diplomat, and a historical scholar, an author, and a poet at the time. But we're not here to talk about Columba, we are here to talk about Nessie. So, his legend, we know the monstrous encounter because of a 7th century biographer, Saint Adamon, book The Life of Saint Columba. Coincidentally, this is the first written account of the Loch Ness Monster that we are talking about today. So while standing upon the bank of the Ro River Ness, which flows out into Loch Ness, in northern Scotland, Columba contemplated the best way to cross to the other side. He had considered the problem before him. He came across a group of heathenish 
Picts, who were busy burying a friend who had been attacked by enormous, quote, water beast while swimming in the river. When Columba got the gist of the story from the assembled mourners, he laid his staff across the dead man's chest, and miraculously the man stood up, hale and hearty, and was resurrected by St. Columba. Against common sense, Columba ordered one of the men there, Loon Makmunin, one of his fellow monks, to swim across the loch and bring back a small boat known as a cobble, which was moored on the other shore. He was like, hey, go get this boat for it. Without hesitation, Lewin stripped off his tunic and immediately jumped into the water to go get the boat. The monster, alerted by Lewin's splashing around, surfaced and raced towards this hapless monk, eager for a bite. The monster roared a mighty roar, darting towards the swimming monk with his mouth wide open, as Lewin was in the middle of the stream of River Ness. Everyone on shore cried out, hoping to warn the monk of his impending doom with Nessie bearing down upon him. You will go no further, demanded St. Columba. Do not touch this man, but leave at once in the name of God. So even though the monster was no more than a spear's length away from the swimming monk, at the sound of this saint's command, it stopped and immediately fled back from the scene, terrified. So as the saint Adaman described, the monster moved, quote, more quickly than if it had been pulled back by with ropes, end quote. The monster quickly descended into the depths of the lock behind him, allowing Brother Lewin to paddle the boat back unharmed. Everyone, including Nessie, was astonished. If the heathens at the funeral weren't sufficiently impressed with Columba and God's will bringing their friend back to life, they were even more impressed now with the monster obeying this saint. They all gave glory to the god of the Christians, and the Picts converted on the spot, being baptized in the very river of Loch Ness. But Columba's monks were probably a little surprised as well. According to St. Adam, the Irish monk was a veritable thumbachin, meaning producing hot and cold miracles as easy as turning on a faucet. He was known to just do that. So, with this lengthy miracle resume that he has, Columba prophesied regularly, healed the sick, and many other things, even subduing savage beasts as we see with Nessie. But, with that tale of St. Columba gives us the very first story of Nessie in Loch Ness on August 22nd, 565 BCE. So, while a lot of people do know St. Columba and his deeds, it's even more apparent the effect that it had on the media and tradition of Scotland as Loch Ness now was gifted with this cryptid of its very own, comparable to many others such as uh, Champy in Lake Champlain over in Canada, as well as many others. There is a water, a river worm known to exist in one of the lakes of Iceland. There is Bigfoot, the Yeti, you know, it, it joins this rank and file of many mythical creatures, a lot of who bear resemblance to Nessie. So here you can see a, uh, a snippet of the Weekly Scotsman from 1960, The Monster Surfaces. So it, it not only did it, you know, give an establishment for the powers of the saint and his ability to control nature at God's will and convert the Picts, but it also gave Scotland this new identity with this cryptid. And this cryptid is responsible for a lot of tourism as well as monetary gain from merch as well as videos and many other sources of income because of the cryptids the, the, the love Scotland I'm not gonna generalize here but a lot of people in the area of Loch Ness they, they cherish this and a lot of people around the world cherish Nessie as well so this first sighting on August 22nd 565 gave us this gift of Nessie and a fun creature of Scotland so thank you so much for watching. I know this was a short little silly video, but I hope you enjoyed learning about the origins of Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster in Loch Ness, Scotland, as well as the legend of St. Columba, the Catholic Irish Saint. So with those two things, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, consider hitting the like and subscribe, or you can leave a dislike. If you have any comments, suggestions, concerns, anything at all, put that in the comment section for me. I try to read every comment. So. With that, as always, I'm Shulbro6, that's your weekly dose of history, and I'll catch y'all next time. Cheers.